Haleluya. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Si ujulie jirani yako hali, umjulie yako namna gani. Inawezekana kwa ibada bado hujajua jirani yako. So I give you that one opportunity ya ya, ya kuinteract na jirani yako, umjulie hali, msalimie. Inawezekana mwingine hata mjaonana in the course of that week ni vizuri umsalimie katika jina la Yesu Kristo. It is always a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Na hata Daudi yeye alisema ya kwamba alifurahia walipomwambia twende nyumbani mwa baba. Abia jirani yako niko nyumbani mwa baba yangu. Mwambie niko na every right ya kulijoice. Mimi ninaambianga watu mambo ingine tunafanyanga kanisani. Enda ujaribu kufanya kwa matatu. Ama hapo kwa ama hapo kazini. Ujaribu kufanya ati ile tunasema tupigie Yesu makofi utajipata unapiga peke yako. Lakini because here we are in the house of the Lord, we have every right to rejoice and to be glad in Jesus name. Hallelujah. We may get seated. Thank you very much Reverend. I'm so happy for this opportunity to minister the word of God on this altar. I also appreciate uh, your wife. We thank God because of your hospitality together with Pastor Kamau and the entire leadership team. We 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 really don't take it for granted. Uh, I also really feel humbled kuja ku minister katika revival meetings hizi Bwana uh, tukuzwe kwa sababu ya kibali hicho nimeokoka Kristo ni mokozi kama vile Reverend amesema ninaitwa Pastor Evans nina hudumu na kanisa la Worldwide sisi ni majirani ni majirani wenu hapa Gidhongori that is why we are ministering and we thank God because of that. Singeweza kufika na pamoja na mke wangu siku ya leo kwa sababu ya various activities ambazo tulikuwa nazo. Kuna activity ilikuwa inaendelea katika kanisa letu la mehango na viongozi walikuwa wanahitajika mahara pale na kwa hivyo I had to send one of the church elder pamoja na one of the deacon, Deacon Charles ambaye tumekuja pamoja na yeye on Thursday and Friday and there, kwa hivyo that, that team ikaenda kuwakilisha kanisa pale pale kanisani tukaacha my wife pamoja na the church elder elder Peter tulikuwa pamoja na yeye siku ya jana they are the ones who are ministering uh, in the church lakini together with me i have deacon Kelago ambaye ningependa kumkaribisha ili pia yeye muweze kumjua anapotusalimia katika jina la Yesu so just come and say hi to the church praise god praise god again kwa majina anaitwa Simon Kirago nimeokoka na mpenda Yesu kwa sababu ya kuniokoa na kuniahidi ufalme wa pikuti praise god hakuna kitu kingine tunatafuta hii dunia ni ufalme wa hizi kingine tutaziacha hapa Mungu awabariki na watende mema amen thank you ah uh, pia pamoja with me is my second born son together with my daughter ningependa pia kuwakaribisha singeweza kuja na wa first born yeye yeah, anakuanga among the technical team pale kanisani hata wakati alisikia kwamba tunakuja na nakasikia one of the one of the kids akimuuliza wewe our elder brother tunaenda akawaambia mimi niko na kazi kubwa pale kanisani kwa hivyo nyinyi mtaenda mimi muniache is among the technical team kwa hivyo hangeweza kutoka pale lakini i have na hashon na hashon and alice wakalibie tu najua na hashon nako na memory verse na alice na wimbo na unajua hawa ni wadada wanafaa kusaidiwa kwa stairs si ndio so these are second born na hashon awasalimie alafu amesema awasalimie tu. Yeah. Na ako na haki. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God again. My name is Nashon and I'm born again. Amen. Praise God. Praise God again. My name is Alice Njerimongi and I'm born again and I have and I have a song. Stand with me Lord stand by me Lord loving Jesus stand by me I have no strength of power of my own loving Jesus stand by me thank you 
Amen. Bwana awabariki sana. We thank God. Amen. Good. Ningependa tuingie kwa neno la Mungu. And uh, I want to bring the message entitled Maintaining Spiritual Glow. Na kabla uandike hiyo jina grow ni vizuri ni kuambia ni ile ya L. L sio ya R. Maintaining spiritual glow. Uandike ile ya L usiandike ya R kwa sababu ya background kadhaa inaweza kosa kutoka kwa ile jia inafaa. Na that is why nimefanya that emphasis. Maintaining spiritual glow. We are going to read the book of Romans chapter number 12 verse number 11. I am going to, lo- to lead using revised standard version and I'm also going to read the same verse using amplified bible version. Romans chapter number 12 verse number 11. I lead using revised standard version and then I'm going to lead the same using amplified bible version. And uh, because you are writing you can also write the book of Exodus chapter number 27 verse number 20 to verse number 21 Exodus 27 verse number 20 to verse number 21 We may not go to the book of 1 Samuel 3 verse 2 to 4 but it is important you also light it you can uh, have a look at it in your own time First Samuel chapter 3 verse number 2 to verse number 4 If we can have Romans 12 verse number 11 we can lead I said I'm leading using revised version and then I lead using amplified bible version This is what the bible says You have it Thank you This is what the bible says Never flag in zeal but sorry never flag in zeal be a glow with the spirit serve the lord i repeat it again never flag in zeal be a glow with the spirit serve the lord amplified put it this way never lagging behind in diligence a glow in the spirit enthusiastically serving the lord let me also read the book of exodus chapter number 27 verse number 20 to verse number 21 command the people of israel to bring you pure oil of pressed olives for the light to keep the lamps burning continually the lampstand will stand in the tabernacle in the front of the inner curtain that shields the ark of the covenant Aaron and his sons must keep the lamps burning in the Lord's presence all night this is a permanent law for the people of Israel and it must be observed from generation to generation what is to glow it is to shine brightly i'm giving the definition of the word glow it is to shine brightly it is to shine brightly intensely and with steady light but without frame i repeat it again to grow is to shine brightly to shine brightly intensely and with steady light but without frame but without frame kwa nini you are supposed to grow lakini usiwe na ile 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 makali ya moto kwa sababu kubuka Neno ambalo tulisoma in the book of Matthew chapter number 5 from verse number 14 the word of God was saying ya kwamba we are the light of the world 
Na the reason as to why I want to speak about maintaining our our glow ni kwa sababu kuna mambo ambayo tunafaa kutilia mkazo kama wa Kristo ili hii nuru iendelee iendelee kuangaza kuna mambo ambayo inafaa kupatikana katika maisha yetu na hata tunapoangalia mfano kama wa Philip kuna kitu ambacho alikuwa nacho katika maisha yake na jambo hilo ndio lilimsaidia in the midst of darkness ya kwamba yeye aliendelea kuwa radiant aliendelea kuangaa aliendelea kuwa nuru na hapo tunapo nilipokuwa ninatoa hiyo tafsiri nime, t, t, nimesema without frame because frame kazi yake ni kuchoma tunaelewana kwa sababu ndio unaweza kuwa unatoa nuru lakini ile nuru ambayo unatoa watu hawataweza kukukaribia because you are burning them and therefore the right that we are producing hatutoi hii nuru na hii nuru pia iwe inazuilia watu kutukaribia eh ni kama vile kama tutatumia moto kuleta nuru kuna zile boundary ambazo zitawekwa na ule moto sio mtu ataweka ni moto wenyewe utaweka boundary ya kwamba you cannot go beyond this kwa sababu huyo huo moto utakuchoma and therefore as a church and believers tunapoongea kuhusu being the right of the world ile nuru ambayo tunafaa kutoa haifai kuwa ya kwamba iko na makali inazuilia watu kutukaribia ama mwawai ona inzi ama hao wadudu wakati moto umeakishwa ndio ni moto na unaleta nuru lakini hao wadudu hawapendagi kukaribia pale wanakaanga baribari because that right from the fire is going to burn them abia jirani yako you are not supposed to burn mwambie your right is not supposed to burn mwambie it is supposed to, pro- to provide right ama ujai kutana na, na, na watu ambao ni kama moto Eh, ujawahi kutana na watu ambao ni kama moto. Huyo huyo mtu ukimkaribia atakuchoma. Na wengine wanachomanga watu kupitia maneno yao. Si umesikia vile Eleven amesema, eh, whenever all <laughs> Ni kwa sababu hawa watu kuna kuna mambo ambayo wanafanya yanafa, lakini ile nuru ambayo wako nayo iko na iko ni kama miale ya moto inazuilia watu kuwakaribia because ukikaribia huyo mtu utachomeka utachomeka kupitia matendo utachomeka kupitia maneno utachomeka kupitia mambo ambayo atafanya and therefore i want to bring several sources of power, of, of power for spiritual glow sources of power for spiritual glow Remember we have said ya kwamba to grow is to shine brightly intensely and with a steady light without frame. Na kwa hivyo kuna zile source zinafaa kuwa zetu ili zitusaidie tuweze kuangaza na, tu, na tusiwe watu wa kuchoma. One of the key source na tumeona vile ambavyo Paul anaambia watu wa kule Roma anawaambia ya kwamba wawe na bidii wawe na bidii and be a grow ya kwamba waendelee kuangaza with the spirit serving the lord with the spirit serving the lord na kwa hivyo one of our source of power for spiritual grow it is the holy spirit One of the source of power for spiritual glow it is the holy spirit it is the holy spirit Tumeona maagizo ambayo Mungu anampea Musa naye Musa anapea maagizo haya kwa makuhani In the book of Exodus chapter 27 ambao tumesoma Tumeona Musa anaambiwa command the people of Israel to bring you pure oil of blessed olives for the right Musa anaamuru hawa watu wakuletee mafuta ili haya mafuta ndio yalikuwa yana yana sustain moto in the tabernacle kwa sababu tunaelewa tunapoongea kuhusu the tabernacle ilikuwa na section tatu ilikuwa na the outer court ilikuwa na the holy place na pia ilikuwa na the holy of holies 
and the way the tabernacle ilikuwa designed ni ya kwamba haikuwa na madirisha na kwa hivyo kulikuwa na ile candlestick ambayo ilikuwa inawakisha uh, uh, zile taa saba na sasa hiyo ili iendelee kuwaka Musa anaambiwa ya kwamba ambia watu walete mafuta ambayo itahakikisha moto unaendelea kuwaka and you know in our days mambo ya mafuta imekuwa misused kwa jia ambayo haieleweki kwa sababu by then iliko, mafuta ilikuwa inaashilia roho mtakatifu lakini sasa tayari roho mtakatifu amekuja and therefore we don't require kuendelea kutilia maanani sana the sembo kwa sababu kile ambacho kilikuwa kinaashiliwa tayari kimekuja katika maisha yetu tayari tumepokea and therefore one of the key source of power for spiritual grow it is the holy spirit Luke chapter number 24 and verse number 49 Luke chapter 24 and verse number 49 I want to read again using amplified bible version The bible says Listen carefully this is Jesus who is speaking And I want to tell you also listen Abia jirani yako listen carefully I am sending the promise of my father the holy spirit upon you but you are to remain in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed fully equipped with the power from on high i want you to understand this yesu amekuwa pamoja na wanafunzi wake for a period of more than three years amewafunza amewatrain na hata wakati mwingine amawapea majukumu waende wakahubiri na wanakuja with a very positive report ya kwamba wakati ulitutuma watu wamepona mapepo yametoweka lakini hebu look at the instructions of Jesus Yesu wakati anaondoka hawaambii ya kwamba mumepokea experience ya kutosha sasa muingie kwa kazi na that is why Biblia ime, imesema the amplified bible inasema Yesu anawaambia listen carefully wapendwa kama tutaendelea kuangazia watu bila kuachoma we need the power of the holy spirit abia jirani yako you need the power of the holy spirit mwambie vizuri unahitaji nguvu za roho mtakatifu na level mimi huwa ninapea watu freedom ukiona huyo jirani yako ni kama hakusaidii vizuri kupokea neno unaweza angalia ile kiti ingine iko vacant alafu uhame tu pole pole ataelewa <laughs> bwana Yesu asifiwe Yesu anaambia wanafunzi wake kwamba sikirizeni kwa makini Yesu ye ameona ya kwamba wakati wake wa, wa kuondoka umewadia na sasa anaenda hata kama hawa watu amewafunza amewatrain kuna kitu ambacho anaangalia na anaona wanahitaji Yesu akaelewa ya kwamba hawa watu nikiwatuma na experience peke yake wataenda na watazimwa wakienda kukabiliana na mafarisayo na masadukayo they will not be able to withstand them and therefore there is something extra ambayo wanahitaji na wanafaa kuondoka na kukimbia nayo ndio sababu anawaambia msidhubutu kuondoka msidhubutu kutoka muende kule Yerusalemu mgoje mpaka mpokee nguvu za roho mtakatifu Jesus knew ya kwamba the disciples ile training ambayo wako nayo wakipokea roho mtakatifu wataweza kuangaza they are going to shine and that is why wakati wanamuua Stephen Biblia inasema ya kwamba walipokuwa wanampiga mawe wakaona ya kwamba sura yake imebadilika kumaanisha in the midst of pain kuna kitu ambacho Stephen aliweza kutoa na kikashangaza watu ni kwa sababu alikuwa amepokea ujazo wa Roho Mtakatifu mpendwa even in the midst of crisis you are supposed to grow 
unafaa kuendelea yani katikati ya crisis na uchungu eh huo uchungu haufai kufunika nuru yako unafaa kuendelea kwamba wewe ni ile tunaitanga unameremeta Abia jirani yako unameremeta Mwambie Roho Mtakatifu atakufanya umeremete. Roho Mtakatifu atakufanya uwe na nuru ambayo sio ya kipekee. And therefore Jesus anawaambia wanafunzi wake, "Msidhubutu kutoka. Don't dare." Amen. Nasikia kama liko na this peke yake. Amen. Tuendelee tu. Tuendelee kushughulika. Yesu anawaambia wanafunzi wake. Listen carefully. I am sending the promise of my father. Na amplified inaweka vizuri hapo the Holy Spirit upon you. Na anawaambia but you are to remain in the city. You are to remain in the city. In other words kwa sababu Yesu ameondoka hawakuwa wanafaa immediately waingie na waanze kazi kuna nguvu ambazo anawaambia na wacha niwaambie without the holy spirit wanafunzi hawangeweza kuangaza without the holy spirit for example peter peter wakati Yesu Kristo ameshikwa Peter aliingia kwa wepesi kwa mfuko wake na akatoa upanga akakata yule askari. Na the same same Peter wakati hakuwa amepokea nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu anaenda pahali kuota moto akifuatilia vile mambo inaendelea na msichana mmoja anakuja kwake anamwambia wewe wewe ni kama ni mmoja wa wale watu. Peter anasema mimi Simjui. Imagine ya kwamba Peter amekuwa with Jesus for three years. Lakini sasa kwa sababu ya kuwa threatened, anasema huyo huyo simjui. Mara ya pili anakuja bado anaulizwa the same question. Anasema huyo nilikwambia na ninaona watu wasichana wa siku hizi ni kama hawasiki yangi. Ni kama hawasiki yangi. Si nilikwambia huyo simjui. Ni maneno gani hiyo ambayo unaniletea? Mara ya tatu tena anaambiwa ya kwamba wewe hata sura yako na macho yako. <laughs> si unajua kwamba wale ambao wamekaa katika ndoa sana kuna kiwango ambacho huwa mnafikanga mnafanana na mke wako na mwanamume wako. Hata mkitembea kwa kwa kuwajia watu wanaweza sema huyu ni brother na lakini ni kwa sababu na kwa hivyo pita amekaa pamoja na Yesu for three years. Na kwa hivyo inawezekana ameyakuwa ya character na tabia kama ya Yesu. Na kwa hivyo anaambiwa wewe mlikuwa na yeye. Lakini akamkana Yesu mara tatu. Kwa Kwa sababu kuna nguvu ambazo hakuwa amepokea ambazo zilikuwa zinafaa kumsaidia in that very situation. Asimame na aseme huyo ninamjua. Huyo ambaye mnaongea juu yake ninamjua. Hebu tuangalie the same The same same Peter anasimama na ujasiri anawaambia hapana huu sio urevi hizi ni nguvu ambazo zilikuwa zimeahidiwa na unabii wa Joel in the book of Joel chapter number 2 and verse number 27 ya kwamba nyakati hizo mtapokea roho mtakatifu roho mtakatifu atamimiwa juu yetu wazee wataona roho na vijana wataona maono ninaomba kila mchana walio katika jina la Yesu May we receive the power of the Holy Spirit because yes. about the power of the Holy Spirit is going to help us to grow. Yes.
believers failing to shine even after, even, after, even after being in charge for a very long time? That is a question that we need to answer. Why are many believers, why are many Christians failing to shine even after being in charge for a very long time? Kwa nini? Kwa Kristo wei? Hata baada ya kuwa kabisani ya kamingi bado wanaendelea hawa angazi, hawa angazi, hawa to hile mu. Kwa nini? 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 Ana, anaongea kuhusu watu miatano ambao walishuhudia Yesu akiondoka allowed 500 people ambao walikuwa ni witness wa Yesu akiondoka lakini ningependa tufanye mahesabu and I thank God because our reverend ni mtu wa mahesabu in the upper room tunaona watu 120 where are the rest Where were the rest? Where are 380 people? Because in the upper room, Bibiria inasema vizuri, 120 diyo waligatha mahara pale. Kumaanisha, kuna watu ambao walijijaza na wakasema sisi ya tuna muda wakugojea. Tunaenda kuchapa injiri. We don't have time to waste. Lakini Bibiria imesema ya kwamba, Yesu anawambia, do not leave Jerusalem until you are fully tired clothed. You are what? Hebu tuangalie clothing kidogo. Na wima imealikwa kwa mkutano mkubwa hivi. Alafu niende kwa ward lab yangu nichague kinyasa na vest. Kinyasa, vest na safari boot na na kofia ambaye iko na afani sragan alafu nikuje hapa we have the servant of god who is going to minister unto us in this service wapendo hata kuingia tu ashas asha wataanza kunishughulikia asha peke yake pale kwa sababu anataka kujua ajenda ni nini kwa sababu itakuwa concluded ya kwamba Huyu alikuwa ameanza process ya kujiandaa lakini hakuikamilisha. Niulizie jirani yako wewe umekalimi mimi ya process. Kwa sababu Yesu anawaambia until you are fully clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit. Sasa uliza jirani yako are you fully clothed? Yes. Are you fully clothed? Because my friend if you are not fully clothed kuna bato ambazo hautaweza kupigana That is why when uh, yes. wakati Paul anaandikia wa Efeso anawaambia kuhusu the full armor of God the full armor Yes ili waweze kwenda vitani anawaambia ni lazima wawe na vazi kamili And I thank God kwa sababu unapoangalia mavazi ambayo Paul anaongea juu yake Yes. 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 Unafaa kukabiliana na yeye sawa sawa. Na kwa hivyo ni lazima ukubali roho takatifu akupige. Yes, watu. Ukiondoka unaonekana wewe ni mtu ambaye inaanga. We ask in the question. Why are so many Christians or believers ambao wamekuwa kanisani? Yes. They are lacking the power. Let me tell you, you cannot have Holy Spirit and you fail to shine. 
Yes, we want to. You cannot have the Holy Spirit of God and then you fail to shine. Lord, the Katifu ni lazima akta ku compel you shine for Jesus Christ. Lakini ya believer minus the Holy Spirit itakuwa ni mbu. Itakuwa ni mbu. And therefore, the reason as to why many believers are failing to shine it is because they have not started in the presence of God long enough. Hawa jatale beleza mungu. Yes. Baka wapoje ujaji. Nina urizanga hili suwa. Yes. Yes. Why is it wakati na itaji yes. Wakati na itaji mambo ya fani. Yes. One, two. One, two, yes. Why is it that in our days we are lacking people about when we pray and fast kwa sababu ya ujazo wa Roho Mtakatifu? Lakini kwa sababu ya mahitaji mengine hana shida. Anaweza funga na anaweza omba. Ili hitaji hilo. Eh, awe hiyo hitaji Mungu aweze kujitana na lakini when it comes to prayers and fasting so that we yes. receive the power from on high what we did kwa meshiko mimi ndio nilizie jirani yako na hili swali ninamwambia uulize unamuuliza kwa sababu hata Paul ye mwenyewe in the book of Acts chapter number 19 aliuliza and therefore i have the moral authority ya kuuliza hili swali kwa sababu kama Paul ye mwenyewe anauliza maana Paul anakutana na watu kule i think in Ephesus na anawauliza je mmejazwa na roho sasa niulize ile jirani yako je umejazwa na roho muulize <laughs> je umejazwa na roho <laughs> na macho yake ita itakwambia tu the, 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 ile ile macho atakuangalia nayo itakwambia kama <laughs> kama amejazwa mapana kwa sababu Paul anawauliza kwa nini ni, ni ubatizo gani huo ambao mlipokea? Wanasema sisi tunajua tu ubatizo wa Yohana. Lakini Paul anawaambia kuna ubatizo zaidi ya huo ubatizo ambao sio wana mwanadamu lakini unatoka kwa Yesu Kristo ye mwenyewe. Na Biblia inasema ya kwamba Paul akawaombea na wakajazwa na Roho Mtakatifu. Wapendwa ninawaambia kama tutangaa kwa sababu ya Yesu ni lazima tujazwe na Roho. Ni lazima tujazwe na Roho. Kwa sababu wewe minus the Holy Spirit you will struggle to shine. The other question is why are there so many nominal Christians in the church? Why are there so many nominal Christians in the church? Na swali la mwisho why why is there so much syncretism syncretism nitakwambia baadaye maana yake in the church why is there so much syncretism in the church syncretism ni ile mixture of beliefs mixture of beliefs mtu anasema ya kwamba ndio mimi ninamwamini Yesu Kristo hata nimeokoka hata mimi ni kiongozi lakini bado miungu ya utamaduni inamcontrol ako kanisani na hata wakati mnaomba anaomba level and warrior ameotuambia kuhusu machozi hata wakati watu wanatoa machozi atatoa lakini baada ya ibada kuna ibada ingine ambayo ataenda that is what we call syncretism why is it happening in the church in our days it is because people have neglected the power of the holy spirit watu wamekataa na kwa hivyo ha- hawana kiasi hawana kiasi katika maisha yao i want to give you several things that the holy spirit of god will do in your life several things that the holy spirit will do in your life to make you grow things that the holy spirit or 
areas that the Holy Spirit will make you grow. Maeneo ambayo Roho Mtakatifu atakusaidia ili uweze kuangaza. Eneo la kwanza it is in the area of proclaiming the gospel. The Holy Spirit will make you grow in the area of proclaiming the gospel. Katika maeneo ya kutangaza injiri, Roho Mtakatifu atakusaidia na utaweza kushine, utaweza kuangaza. Hiyo nimeitaja in the book of Acts chapter number 3. Sorry, chapter number 2 and verse number 14. Pahali ambapo tunaona, Bibili inasema, Then Peter stood. Then Peter stood. Acts 2.14. Bibili inasema, Then Peter stood. Kwa nini Peter ana, anaweza kusimama? Ni kwa sababu kuna nguvu ambazo zinamsaidia na anaona ya kwamba this is an opportunity. Uwe ni inashangaa na Peter kwa sababu ile salmon ambayo tunaona Peter alihubiri ninaonanga hata sio salmon ambaye alichukua nafasi ya kuiandaa kwa sababu ni tu watu wameuliza swali wameanza kusema ya kwamba hawa ni kulewa wamelewa Peter mara hiyo hiyo anasimama pamoja na wanafunzi wengine na wanasema hapana na ile injiri ambayo Peter anahubiri mahara pale inakuwa na impact hivi kwamba watu wanauliza what shall we do Biblia inasema ya kwamba injiri ambayo Peter alihubiri ikawa ni kama inadunga mioyo yao wanauliza tutafanya nini Na Biblia inasema ya kwamba that very day watu elfu tatu wakapokea wokovu. Let me tell you, we kama hatutakuwa enabled in the Holy Spirit, itabidi tuhubiri 3000 salmon ili mtu mmoja aokoke. I don't know kama umeelewa vile nimesema. Without the Holy Spirit, it will force you to preach 3000 sermons for one soul to come to Jesus. Lakini when you are full of the Holy Spirit, you need one sermon to save 3000 souls. And therefore the Holy Spirit he gives us the power, the ability to preach the gospel, to preach the gospel. Kwa sababu, as we preach the gospel, tunaangazia watu. Tunaangazia watu. Tunawafanya, tunawaletea the right of God. Wapendwa, katika pahali ya papu unaishi, kuna watu ma, katika eneo hilo, they need the right of God. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to proclaim the gospel. Another area the Holy Spirit of God is going to help us to grow, it is in the area of signs, wonders, and miracles. The second area, it is in this area of signs, wonders, and miracles. Let us go to the book of Acts, chapter number 3, and verse number 6. Acts, chapter 3, in verse number 6. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Peter wakiwa na Yakobo, wanaingia katika hekalo, na ni masaya maombi na walipokuwa wanaingia mahara pale kuna kiwete ambaye alikuwa amekaa pale muda mrefu na inawezekana wakati mwingine ambao akinapita walikuwa wanaenda kuomba because in a biblia inatuonyesha it was their culture kwenda kuomba kwa hivyo mara nyingi walikuwa wameenda kuomba na inawezekana hata wakati huo walikuwa na pesa mifukoni ambao walikuwa wanasaidia huyu mtu ambaye alikuwa na hitaji because he was a beggar he was a cripple lakini hii siku 
kuna kitu tofauti ambacho akinapita walikuwa nayo na that is why wanamwambia silver and gold we don't have but what we have inuka na utembee wacha nikuambie kuna miujiza inagoja kutendwa na wewe lakini mpendo hautaweza kuitenda kwa nguvu ya ugali na omena but through the power of the holy spirit Peter anamwambia kwa jina la Yesu Kristo inuka na utembee wapendwa kuna impact ambayo Mungu anataka tufanye in our generation na kama tutaweza kuangaza katika maeneo ambayo Mungu ametuaminia we need the holy spirit akina Peter minus the holy spirit hawangeweza kumwambia inuka na utembee lakini the same same people full of the power of the holy spirit walikuwa wana uwezo sasa na ujasiri mwambie jirani yako wacha uoga mwambie wawekelee mikono wewe unajua wakati mwingine tumekosa kufanya mambo ishara zimekosekana miujiza imekosekana kwa sababu ya uoga ati sasa asipopona nitasema nini watu watasema nini watu watasema si wewe ulikuwa unaponya ni Yesu huwa anaponya wewe umefanya kazi yako ya kumwekelea mikono kwa sababu hiyo ndio majukumu ambayo tumepewa tuwawekelee mikono tuwaombe na watapokea uponyaji and therefore we need to encourage ourselves kwa sababu wakati mwingine opportunities zimepatikana opportunities za kutenda miujiza mchungaji mmoja alitupea ushuhuda vile ambavyo aliitwa pahali ya kwamba mtoto amekufa na sasa kati aliambiwa akawaambia hapana wacha nikuje huyo mtoto atafufuka let me come msifanye jambo lingine lolote mgoje kwanza nikuje msipoza msipere harakisha kwenda mochari gojeni nikuje mtoto atafufuka i think wakati alienda inawezekana haku ameona mtu mwingine ambaye amekufa hivyo wakati alifika uoga ukaingia akawaambia eh, sasa twendeni kwa polisi <laughs> Watu wamekaa wamegoja aje afanye ombezi mtu afuvuke lakini wakati alienda akawa intimidated na the scene akawaambia sasa vile tutafanya tutaenda kwa polisi tustaki hii kifo wapendwa kuna miujiza ambayo Mungu anataka tufanye ili imletee utukufu you know what happened baada ya huyu kiwete kuweza kutembea watu elfu tano wakampokea Yesu sasa tuko na kanisa ya watu wangapi elfu ngapi elfu ngapi tabia jirani yako sio ngumu kuwa na mega churches tunafaa kuruhusu roho mtakatifu atawale maishani mwetu tuweze kuangaza ishara na miujiza ifanyike na let me tell you you are able to do it science miracles and wonders your speciality ya wachugaji ah uh-uh, it is a speciality of every believer it is a speciality it is your speciality that is why we said that kwamba god number one amekupea title you are the right of the world na kwa hivyo wakati unaulizwa umekuja kufanya muujiza ukiwa na kama nani mwambie mimi si, hata sina title ingine niko na title mimi ni nuru ya ulimwengu na katika hali hii kuna muujiza ambao Bwana atafanya na kutatokea nuru signs and wonders zinatugojea kama nuru ya ulimwengu lakini without the holy spirit wapendwa it will be difficult jambo lingine ambalo roho mtakatifu atakusaidia so that you may grow ni ya kwamba he will break spiritual stagnation he will break every spiritual stagnation stagnation ni ile hali ya kukwama katika kiwango kimoja for a very long time kukaa katika level moja 
ya mambo ya kiroho because it is the desire of God ya kwamba tuinuke from one glory to another na yule ambaye huwa anatusaidia kuinuka kutoka kiwango kimoja hadi kiwango kingine it is the holy spirit of God he gives us the power that we are able to remove every kind of stagnation in our lives kuna watu ambao wame stagnate katika kiwango kimoja iwe ni ya maombi iwe ni neno la Mungu ya kwamba yeye ame stagnate katika ya kwamba nikienda kusoma neno la Mungu ninalala amekuwa stagnant mara pale ya kwamba mimi siwezangi kuomba unajua kuna mtu aliuliza ya kwamba sasa mnaendaga kesha kufanya nini mnaenda kesha kufanya nini kwa sababu yeye anaangalia maombezi ya usiku mzima anashindwa mnaombea nini ni kwa sababu kuna kiwango ambacho amekuwa stagnant lakini when we, we receive the holy spirit of god who anavunja every form of spiritual stagnation in our lives na tunaweza kuangaza katika maeneo ambayo Mungu anataka na watu ambao tunaona mfano mzuri it is in the book of acts chapter number 6 and verse number 5 Tunaona watu kama akina Philip na akina Stephen. Acts chapter number 6 and verse number 5. This is a proposal kwa sababu si tumesema sasa kanisa limekuwa kubwa. We have a population of around 8000 people. Na Biblia bado inasema in the book of Acts chapter number 2 ya kwamba Mungu alikuwa anawaongezea day after day. Kwa hivyo kanisa limekuwa kubwa. Na sasa mitume wamefika kiwango wameona ya kwamba shughuli za kanisa ni nyingi tuwezi enda ya kwamba sisi ndio tunahubiri sisi ndio tunapeana neno sisi ndio tunaomba na bado sisi ndio tunapakua chakula and so what did they do in act 65 this proposal priest the whole group they chose Stephen a man full of what iko hapa you have the projection here inasema full of what and full of what and what sasa uliza jirani yako yani kazi ya kupakua chakula inahitaji imani na roho kupakua chakula si nimesikia on 28 mtakuwa na sherehe hapa kweli kabisa kupakua chakula wale watu watakuwa wanapakua itabidi sasa twende tutafute lakini let me tell you This Holy Spirit of God alikuwa wa msaada sana katika maisha ya wapendo wa hawa ili wasikwame katika kiwango kimoja. Hebu tuone in the book of Acts chapter number 8. Acts chapter number 8. I read from verse number 4. Ili uone vile ambavyo the early church, the leaders of the early church wakuli remain stagnant in the same level kwa sababu kuna uwezo ambao walikuwa wanapokea kutoka kwa Roho Mtakatifu anawasaidia kuingia kiwango cha juu Acts 8 from verse number 4 the bible says those who had been scattered preached the word whenever they went Philip ambaye in Acts chapter number 6 tumemuona yale majukumu ambaye alikuwa amepewa ni ya kugawa chakula lakini sasa in act 8 verse 5 tunaona Philip went down to the city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there ni nini hii ambayo imetoa Philip kutoka kiwango ambacho alikuwa amechaguliwa na sasa amekuwa mwijiristi it is the power of the holy spirit ya kwamba roho mtakatifu anamsaidia philip ya kwamba you have become so effective katika kazi ya, ku, ya, 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 ya kusaidia sasa niko na majukumu makubwa kwa sababu yako abia jirani yako roho wako na majukumu makubwa kwa sababu yako Mwambie the Holy Spirit of God has got higher responsibilities for you. Lakini without the Holy Spirit mpendwa, I want to tell you you are going to stagnate in the same level. But when the Holy Spirit of God comes, anakuanga ni anenebora, anakuanga haya kwamba anatusaidia, anatupush katika viwango za juu. Kwa sababu kuna maeneo ya kwamba Roho Mtakatifu alikusudia. Philip apereke nuru kule Samaria mpaka sifa baadaye zirudi kule Yerusalemu na wasikie ile kazi ambao Philip anafanya and therefore Philip because of the Holy Spirit hakustagnate pahali pamoja alitoka na akawa nuru kwa watu wengine wengi and therefore the Holy Spirit 
anakupea uwezo wa ku break every kind of stagnation on the same page i want to give you three errors that you are supposed to avoid when you are relating with the holy spirit kwa sababu tumesema roho mtakatifu wakati anakuja anatusaidia ku grow anatusaidia kukuwaka anatusaidia kuangaza lakini whenever we are relating with the holy spirit kuna three things that we should not do when we are relating with the holy spirit number one, never quench the holy spirit never quench the holy spirit first the saronians chapter number 5 and verse number 19 first the saronians chapter number 5 and verse number 19 the bible is very clear do not quench the holy spirit do not quench the holy spirit jabu rapidi i can see i have like nine minutes remaining never grieve the holy spirit never grieve usiwai muhuzunisha roho mtakatifu kama roho mtakatifu atakupea uwezo wa kuangaza mpendwa usimuhuzunishe do not grieve the holy spirit that is the book of ephesians chapter 4 and verse badati Ephesians 4:30 The Bible is very clear never grieve do not, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption Mpendwa kama unataka kuendelea kuangaza chini ya uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu don't grieve usimuzunishe Roho Mtakatifu Na thank God kwa sababu Roho Mtakatifu sio kama jubili na, na UDA unajua ile doa ambayo ilikuwa kati ya, ya, ya kina watu wa jubili ulisikia ile fujo ambayo ilikuwa wakati walikuwa wanaachana eh? ama 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 LDP LDP na kanu nakumbuka Liberal Democratic Party wakati walikuwa wanaachana na kanu katika hiyo ndoa hiyo ilikuwa na kelele nyingi wacha niwaambie wakati uhusiano wako na roho mtakatifu unavunjika haunanga kelele the holy spirit is very gentle anatokanga pole 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 na biblia inasema ya kwamba unaacho with the form of godliness but lacking what the power thereof you are lacking the power because the holy spirit of god has departed and one of the most grievous thing ambayo huwa ninaona katika biblia ni wakati biblia inaongea kuhusu samson samson wakati amedhihirisha siri yake chanzo cha nguvu yake ni wapi biblia inasema ya kwamba wakati alifichua hiyo siri na delaila akaweza kumnyoa nguvu za Mungu zikamuondokea naye Delaila anamwambia amuka haraka wafilisti wamekuja Samson akafikiria kwamba nitainuka kama kawaida nitawavunja vunja kama kawaida lakini Biblia inasemanga the most unfortunate thing ambayo haifai kufanyika kwako ya kwamba hakuwa anajua Roho Mtakatifu amemuondokea Roho Mtakatifu wakati anaondoka haondokagi na kelele hata wakati alikuwa anaondoka kwa Samson hakuwa muamsha amwambie mimi nimeenda ah ah aliondoka pole pole Samson akafikiria nitaamka kama kawaida hakujua ya kwamba kuanzia hapo atangolewa macho kuanzia hapo ataanza kusiaga ata Eh? kutoka hapo instead of being a deliverer of the children of Israel mtu ambaye alikuwa anafaa kuangazia taifa la Israeli sasa amepata kazi ya kusiaga mwaiona mtu ambaye anafanya kazi kwa gidhi anakaanga aje anakaanga unga hiyo ndio kazi ambayo sasa Samson mtu ambaye alikuwa anafaa kuangaza kiwango chake kimezushwa ninakuombea katika jina la Yesu Kristo kiwango chako hakitazushwa katika jina la Yesu Kristo lakini hili kiwango chako kisizushwe ni lazima ulinde uhusiano wako na Roho Mtakatifu kwa sababu wacha nikuambie ili hii ta hizi ta ziwake i believe reverend they are not automatic 
Najua in our days kuna technology ya uh, automatic rights ukiingia tu pahali inajiwakisha. Lakini kama hizi sio automatic kuna mtu ambaye alichukua majukumu akaenda kwa switch akaiflip na taa zikawaka. Wapendwa, yule ambaye huwa ana flip taa katika maisha yetu ni roho mtakatifu. Na ye huyo ambaye aliyakisha hiyo nuru in our lives ni lazima tulinde uhusiano wetu na wewe. Ni lazima tulinde our relationship. And therefore number 2 we have said do not grieve the holy spirit. Number 3 do not blaspheme the holy spirit. Those are three errors that we must avoid as believers kama tutaweza kuendelea kuangaza under the power and the influence of the holy spirit. Do not blaspheme the holy spirit. That one we find it in the book of Rook. Luke chapter number 12 and verse number 10. The Bible says, Luke chapter 12 and verse number 10, and everyone who speaks a word against the, the, son, the son of man will be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. As a Christian, do not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. I want to go to the second point very briefly. I think I'll, I'm just going to mention it. Another source of power ambayo itatusaidia sources of power for spiritual growth ya kwanza tumeyosema the holy spirit ya pili it is prayers maombi maombi wapendwa we we kuna mambo kuna mambo ambayo yataletea Mungu utukufu Kuna mambo ambayo yatatufanya tuendelee kuna wili tuendelee kuangaza zaidi ambayo yatafanyika kama tutakubali kuwa watu wa maombi Kuna mambo ambayo Mungu anataka tuzalishe katika maisha yetu na tunaweza tu yazalisha through prayers kupitia maombi through prayers. And therefore, the aspect of prayers is very important. If you are going to continue growing, kama utaendelea kuwa lady at, kama utaendelea kuangaza, mpendua, spend quality time in prayers. Spend quality time in prayers. Watu wengi wamepuuza, guvu za maombwa, za maombi. Let me tell you, you can never spend quality time in the presence of God and you remain the same. Wakati Musa ame spend 40 days and nights na Mungu. Wakati anashuka mlimani, watu wanamwambia wewe Musa jifunike. Unatoa mwangaza hata hatuwezi tukakuangalia vizuri. Why? Because kuna muda ambao Musa ali spend in the in the presence of the Lord. I want to ask you this question. Because you are the right of the world, how much time do you spend in the presence of the Lord? unatumianga muda kiasi gani bere za Mungu because the aspect of prayer kama tutaendelea ku glow it is very important for us to invest in prayers you can find that in the book of James chapter 5 verse number 16 to verse number 18 concerning the prayers of a righteous person is powerful and effective. James chapter 5 verse number 16 to verse number 18. And also you can relate that with the book of 1 Kings chapter number 18 verse 42 to verse number 43. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse number 42 to verse number 43. Kwa sababu unajua Yakobo anataja tu na anatuambia kwamba Elijah alikuwa mwanadamu kama sisi lakini akaomba. Na wakati mwingine tusipo elewa the kind of investment ambayo aliweka katika maombi tunaweza ona kana kwamba alifanya tu maombi eh maombi mepesi na mambo ikatendeka lakini ukiangalia the book of first kings chapter number 18 from verse number 42 utaona ya kwamba Eraija akainama na akaingia kwa maombi. Alafu anatuma mtumishi wake anamwambia enda uangalie kama kuna ishara. Anaambiwa hakuna ishara yote ninaona. 
anaambiwa mara ya pili mara ya tatu mpaka mara ya saba ndio anakuja na ripoti ya kwamba kuna kakitu kawingu ambako ni kama mkono wa mwanadamu nimeona wapendwa if we are going to shine then we must make a heavy investment in prayers lazima tuwekeze katika maombi na mpendo wacha nikuambie prayers is the only investment that you can do alafu ukulie 20 years from now 30 years from now 50 years from now prayers nyinyi mlikuwa wakati tulikuwa tunaambiwa na mheshimiwa Kemunya kuhusu shares za safaricom were you there and i believe majority of us we invested we bought na tulikuwa tunaonyeshwa ya kwamba wewe kama hautanunua wewe ndio tu utabaki ukiwa maskini katika taifa la Kenya. Niulizie jirani yako bado umetajirika sasa. Muulize baada ya kununua umetajirika. Why? Because investments za ulimwengu huu hazina guarantee ya return. Uliza jirani yako kama anajua desi ama nimeanza kufufua mambo ambayo <laughs> ninyamazi hapo <laughs> kwa sababu ya vile yale mambo ambayo tulionyeshwa tukaonyeshwa ya kwamba hapa kuna return na tukaenda tukawekeza lakini wapendo wa siku ya leo ninawaambia wekezeni katika maombi iko na return hautapoteza kwa sababu unaweza wekeza katika mambo ya ulimwengu huu na upoteze lakini ukiwekeza kwa maombi haleluya how old are your kids right now na naona majority hapa reverend kuna wachache ambao hata wa, watoto wao washaondoka lakini majority of us ndio tuko na hili ka kidogo kidogo mpendwa kama unataka the same right ambayo uko nayo katika miaka ile uko nayo your son and your daughter awe pia yeye amefanyika nuru invest in prayers now muombe sasa i want my sons and my daughters at my age they will be proclaiming the gospel watakuwa wanamtumikia Mungu lakini ninawezaje fanya saa hii yani si tuko 2020 lakini ninataka 2060 my sons and daughters watakuwa the right of the world i am going to invest in prayers nitawekeza katika maombi kwa husu na niwatangazie nyinyi hamutapotea and therefore when you invest in prayer unafanya hata watu ambao wamekuzingira they grow they shine the power of prayer now this power is what many people have neglected look at the prayer life ya watu wengi. Yaani mtu ameomba dakika 15 lakini ameanza kuangalia sana. Ni nadhaka kukuambia katika dakika 15 mimi my personal experience. Nimekuwa kwa maombi for 15 minutes lakini huwa ninasikia sijaanza maombi. Because in the first few minutes unakumbuka na je watoto wametoka shule na je yani kuna kuna ma, ja, umeingia katika chumba cha maombi In the first few minutes ninakuwaza kagaza kustrago. By the way nimezima hiyo gas. Hata unaweza toka katika chumba cha maombi uende ukaangalie. Kwa sababu ni dakika za kungangana. Na that is why unaona Yesu hapo wakati ameingia kwa maombi after one hour anakuja kuangalia wanafunzi wake. Ambia jirani yako inawezekana the minimum time ya maombi ni one hour. <laughs> Sijasema ni kanuni lakini inawezekana kwa sababu Yesu anawauliza yani hamungeomba even one Haleluya That is why kwa sababu ya vile Yesu aliinvest katika maombi he was able to shine in the midst of crisis Kama unajua Yesu alikuwa na uwezo wa kuita maraika wakuje wa mrescue lakini because he had done an investment in prayers hata wakati kulikuwa na crisis bado alikuwa anasema wasamehe Mungu wasamehe kwa sababu hawajui vile ambavyo wanafanya mtu ambaye hawekezi katika maombi wakati anaona maadui wake wanateseka anapigaga makofi na anza kuoneni wale wale ambao wanaguzanga watumishi wa Mungu angalia vile Mungu wanyorosha huyo ni mtu ambaye hajajua siri 
Huyo ni mtu ambaye anahajajua siri. And therefore, kama tuta grow, kama tuta shine, wapendwa, let us invest in prayers. And I like the principles of Jesus. The life story of the life story of Jesus. Are in the morning anaenda milimani kuomba. Even in the evening, hata baada ya kulisha watu 1500, 5000 men bila kuhesabu wamama na watoto. Yesu hakuenda Mombasa. Wapendwa kama ni mimi isipo nikuwa nisaidiwe na Mungu. Alafu muujiza ufanyike mikate tano na samaki wawili. Alafu watu moja wa kule wa Shibe ninaitisha holiday. Na ninaambia kanisa ya kwamba sasa ninataka kwenda holiday kwa sababu ya huu muujiza. Lakini look at Jesus. Muujiza unafanyika lakini haumsumbui. Anaenda mlimani, anaenda kutafuta Mungu. Na wakati tena anatoka toka kwa mlima, anapata vile wanafunzi wake wamengangana ni saa tisa za usiku. Bado hawajafika pahali ambapo walikuwa wanaenda kwa sababu kuna upepo unawazuilia. Mpendwa, wewe ukiwa muombezi kuna mambo ambayo hayatakuwa pingamizi kwako. When we invest in prayer, kama we are going to continue growing, kama we are going to continue shining, we must invest in prayers. Jabura Musho, I just mentioned them. It is fellowship of believers. Invest in the fellowship of believers. If you want to continue growing, do not ignore the fellowship of believers. Uh, uh, Acts chapter 2 and verse number 42. Wapendwa, kama unataka kuendelea kugrow, Dhamini ushirika, dhamini ibada Dhamini ibada ya wateure The Bible says in the book of Acts 2, 42 They devoted themselves to the apostles teaching And to fellowship, breaking of bread and prayers Those are four key things Ambazo the early church wali invest kwake They invested in teaching They invested in teaching and I thank God because this church values teaching the word of God. This church values teaching the word of God. Invest in that teaching. Invest in that teaching. They also are devoted in fellowship. Wali the mini ushirika. Kwa nini? Ni kwa sababu ni katika ushirika utatiwa nguvu na wenzako. Siyo kama umewa yenda kwa ibada ama kwa ushirika unajisikia kwamba ume, u, 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 hauna nguvu ya kwamba umeisha Lakini unaenda pale dada ama dugu anatoa ushuda ama neno linahubiriwa linakupea energy Unainuka tena na unaweza, unaweza kuendelea kuangaza And therefore when we value fellowship of believer itasaidia kwamba nuru yetu itaendelea kuangaza They also valued breaking of bread and also they valued prayer Jabu lingine ambaro unafaa kuvario It is a life of humility Humility If you are going to continue growing You need to value humility Mpendwa nyenyekea That is the book of Philippians Chapter 2 Verse number 6 To verse number 7 Philippians 2 Verse number 6 To verse number 7